You'll find treasures more valuable than gold. Digging in the word. Um. Now, now, if we are in churches that don't that don't ever judge a prophecy, then the saints with those gifts, you know, someone may be sitting out in the back with a gift of discernment of spirit and saying, "This guy's not right. The prophecy is not right." Uh, but he never, the you know, the tradition has only the pastor talking, and maybe a few people can prophesy during lulls in the worship time or the music time. Um, so he never gets a chance to use his gift, and other people don't get a chance to exercise their spiritual gifts uh, when it comes to this. Now, I, I uh, know a man named Dan Hubble who, um, who uh, uh, believes he's gifted in the gift of apostleship. And he's a very gifted teacher, and he's, he's started many uh, house churches uh, throughout the years and encouraged many others and, who are doing that. And uh, he says that what they do in their churches is they have, uh, if someone gives a prophecy, uh, the prophets and the other leaders in the church and the congregation as a whole consider what whether the prophecy is from the Lord and how to respond to it. And I believe that that's something that uh, that we need to get back to in the Bible is we need to get back to judging prophecies uh, in a biblical way. Now, um, you know, I, I just remembered a quote from the Didache. You know, the Didache is a, a book written around 100 A.D. Uh, during a time when they still had wandering uh, uh, prophets and apostles wandering around and the, the DDK I'm, I'm not saying it's all right but one thing it warned about it says do not try a prophet speaking by the spirit lest you commit the unpardonable sin well actually the Bible does say to test um, the prophecies okay so that I, I don't agree with that quote but I do understand what uh, possibly what might lie behind it because um, if somebody starts saying well the prop the spirit by which you speak is and says bad things about the spirit and the spirits actually the Holy Spirit the unpardonable sp sin is speaking against the Holy Spirit, and in, and in the case of um, of Jesus, uh, Jesus was casting out demons by the Spirit of God. Uh, his opponent said that he was casting out demons by Beelzebub, the prince of devils, and Jesus said um, that if you speak evil against the Spirit, it will not be forgiven you in this age or in the age to come. So they were calling the Holy Spirit Beelzebub, which is a very bad thing to call the Holy Spirit. So uh, when you are evaluating prophecies, uh, just be careful about that. Don't be young. Don't be very brash and uh, fleshly, and accuse the Holy Spirit of being something that He is not. So we don't want to do that. Um, but we do want to evaluate the prophecies. And if something, if you don't believe something's from the Lord, just you can say, "Hey, I don't have." Uh, you know, I, 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 I since I'm not at peace with that in my spirit. Sounds very charismatic. Um, or you can say, um, you know, you just share what you believe the Lord is showing you. Uh, sometimes. I, you know, I've known people who prophesied, and they would share their experiences. I was about to give a prophecy, and somebody else gave the exact prophecy across the room. And I, I knew a couple of people that had the same experience with speaking in tongues. A person gives a message in tongues, and he said, I had this message in English after the message in tongues. And this is a 13-year-old friend of mine who was a preacher at age 13. And he said... Um, that somebody else gave that exact same message that he had. He had gotten an interpretation of tongues. My college roommate had the same experience. Someone else in the church got the interpret. He heard a message in tongues. He was he knew the interpretation, and somebody else gave the same interpretation. So this is really an interesting thing. And and in the Bible it says, let the prophet speak two or three, and let the other judge. And if a revelation comes to another sitting by, let the first hold his peace. And later it says, for the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophet. So the spirit, the prophet, um, the prophet. Uh, it may be speaking, but if the Lord gives the message to someone else, he needs to yield the floor and let the other people prophesy so that all may learn and all may, may be encouraged. You know, one person doesn't have all the grace and all the gifting. God spreads it out among the body, and if you hog the floor, then you, know, you, don't, you don't let the body of Christ uh, operate and, you, and uh, don't let us have the mutual edification that we need. Um, so uh, we need to get back to New Testament practice on uh, sharing the floor in prophecy. Uh, it's interesting that a lot of revivals uh, tend to go back to a more biblical church meeting, um, like with uh, you know the, the early Pentecostal revival at Azusa Street and the charismatic uh, house church movement in England when that started over there. So, anyway, that's a bit of an aside. Um, so we so far we know that you'll know prophets. Um, Matthew seven tells us that you'll know prophets by their fruits. Okay, so. Um, we don't want to follow after people who have bad fruit, like your Balaam type person, or uh, the person who says, Lord, Lord, but does not do the will of the Father. You know prophets by their fruits. So you don't want to become a follower of a man with bad fruit. Um, 
Interestingly enough, uh, it is possible for a prophet who has prophesied falsely or given a false revelation um, to get a real prophecy. In um, okay, yeah, in First Kings thirteen, that's where that story is. Uh, there was a behold, a man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord, and Jer uh, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. So he gave a prophecy against this altar. And then in verse 11, uh, Now an old prophet dwelled in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. And they also told their father the words which he had spoken to the king. And so the father says, which, which way did he go? And then the sons uh, said, told him where he went, and he, he um, sent his sons to go saddle the donkey, and he goes and he follows the man. And he tells them, uh, the, the man of God from Judah tells him, he says to him, come home with me and eat bread. And the man says, I cannot return with you or go in with you. Neither can I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For I have been told by the word from, of the Lord, you shall not eat bread nor drink water there, nor return by the way you came. He said to him, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, bring him back with you to your house, that he may eat and drink water. He was lying to him. Okay, this, this man was prophesying falsely, he, or he was giving a false revelation. He said he got it by the word of the Lord from an angel. Okay, so he went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water. Okay, so the man of God from Judah um, is eating with the prophet from Bethel. Um, <clears throat> now it happened as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back, the host here. Um, and he cried out to, to the man of God who came from Judah saying, Thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and have not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you, but you came back, ate bread, and drank water in the place which the Lord said to you, Eat no bread and drink no water. Your corpse shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. So it was after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk <clears throat> that he saddled the donkey for him, the prophet whom he had brought back. When he was gone, a lion met him on the road and killed him, and his corpse was thrown on the road, and the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the course, corpse. And there men passed by and saw the corpse down on the road and the lion standing by the corpse. And they went and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. Now when the prophet who had brought him back from the way heard it, he said, It is the man of the Lord, a man of God who is disobedient to the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord has delivered him to the lion, <coughs> which has torn him and killed him, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke to him. And anyway, he, he tells them, he, he buries the prophet. I, he must feel very guilty about this. He buries the man of God from Judah in his own tomb. Okay, so here's the story. Uh, just to recap, prophet, uh, the man of God from Judah is a prophet. He comes down, he prophesies and he, in Judah, and he's not allowed to eat there because the Lord told him not to. Another prophet just wants, oh, I want to hang out with another prophet. It's hard to be in a prophet down here. Maybe he's thinking that. So he finds his prophet and he wants to take him home and, and feed him. And he lies to him and he gives him a false word. He says he got a word from the Lord that you have to come eat with me. And then when they're eating at the table, he, this prophet who had just given the false prophecy gets a real word from the Lord that you're not going to live because you disobeyed the word of the Lord by eating bread. Okay, so the guy dies. And the prophet feels so bad about it, he, he buries the man in his house. So he, he has sinned. This pro old prophet lied. He said he got a word, the word of the Lord from an angel. And he lied about it. He gave a false prophecy. But then God speaks to him again because he had the Old Testament equivalent of the gift of prophecy. He was a prophet. Okay, so what a, what a messy passage this is. Okay, the, the guy's fruits, at least in this case, are not very good. Uh, but God still speaks to him. And God still spoke through Balaam. So if God speaks through somebody, through the gift of prophecy, it doesn't mean that person is necessarily holy. It doesn't mean that person is necessarily even following God. And if somebody prophesies falsely in the name of the Lord one time, it doesn't mean that God uh, cannot prophesy through him again. But I tell you what, I, I sure, you know, with, if this uh, prophet from Bethel prophesied again, you know, I don't think people should uh, give him heed this We've got the book. We've got the book.